In 2014, one small act completely broke apart the Scotland-wide parkour community, affecting events, classes, and even pushing apart friends. And to this day, 10 years later, the Scottish community is still feeling the effects and is only just starting to recover. But what was this act and why did it have such a huge impact on a seemingly tight-knit and connected community? Well, join me as we look at the great fallout of 2014. First of all, can I please put out a quick disclaimer, just saying that everything you are about to hear is being told purely for documentative purposes. It is not an attack on any individual and is not meant to reopen any wounds. I have kept this documentary as informative as possible whilst also remaining discreet. There is some information that I have been asked to withhold, which is completely fine, but please know that nothing in this documentary, nothing that's being withhold, relates to anything shady or illegal. Before we get into the details behind all the conflict, let me set the scene for you as to what parkour was like in Scotland prior to 2014. The Scottish parkour community had grown in leaps and bounds in the last four or five years, with many events, clubs and jams being created and hosted, most notably the Aberdeen Spring Jam and Roots of Movement. The Aberdeen Spring Jam was probably the most emotionally impactful parkour event ever and was unique in its structure for that time. I have made a full documentary on the Aberdeen Spring Jam and I will link it at the end of this video if you have not seen it already. Roots of Movement was both an organisation and an event. The event was a yearly large-scale coaching event with well over 100 people attending each year. The organisation side of it was sort of like Scotland's own governing body. It was the voice for parkour in Scotland. It supported the entire community and provided advice and funding help for any club or individual in Scotland that needed it. In addition to this, there were also weekly jams in different places, classes all over the country and people traveling and training very regularly. But it all went wrong on the run up to Roots of Movement 5, which was due to be held in Edinburgh. The Committee of Roots of Movement, or ROM, was and always had been made up of three main people. The chairperson, the treasurer, and the secretary, with one of these doubling as the vice chair. Their meetings were always open, allowing members of the Scottish parkour community to attend, regardless of their experience or social status. From 2010 to 2013, Chris Grant from Glasgow and Pete McKee from Coatbridge had been chair and vice chair of the committee. But after a vote in 2013, a change was decided and John Hedge Hall from Edinburgh was voted in to be the new head of ROM. Not long before the fifth instalment of Roots of Movement, Hedge received a worrying message about an incident involving two of the coaches that were due to assist at the upcoming event. In Inverness, Peeve, the founder and head coach of Freevolution was running a class like normal. However, at this particular class, a small incident occurred involving his assistant coach and a student who were both friends outside of the class environment. This led to Peeve contacting the head of ROM and asking for his assistant coach to be removed from the staff list of the upcoming event. Now this seems somewhat reasonable, a lesson in restraint, let's say. If an incident like this is going to occur at a local class, then what's the chances of it happening at the largest coaching event in Scotland? But to Hedge, this wasn't enough. It wasn't just the assistant's fault. It was the head coaches. Peeve had failed to be an appropriate mentor and to teach his assistant how to act in a coaching environment, especially since it had recently come to Hedge's attention that the Inverness classes were somewhat unprofessional in comparison to the current coaching standards and incidents like this in Inverness were quite common. So he decided, despite backlash from his own committee, that Peeve would also be taken off the list. This decision caused a massive divide in the Scottish parkour community, and Hedge's refusal to even reconsider expanded that divide. Members of individual communities had differing opinions on the matter. One half were against Hedge's decision to ban Peeve from assisting at ROM. 
He was the head of the second longest Scottish parkour club, he had plenty of experience and had done the right thing to request for his assistant to be taken off that list. And then the other half agreed and supported the decision. Then there were a couple of people in the middle, but the large majority chose a side, usually choosing the side that their community head or community leader was on. But look, let's just take a step back for a minute. Hedge had been voted in as the head of Ronk. He was ready to lead with new ideas, fueled by his strong passion for parkour. He had plenty of experience in coaching, leading, and training. However, old friends of his have said that at this time, Hedge was going through a lot in his personal life. Over the last few years, he had studied an undergraduate and a master's in chemistry. He had just moved onto a PhD in an extremely high performing lab, an experience that he thought was exactly what he wanted something that had been advertised as the perfect next step with a ton of benefits. But instead, Hedge had found an hellish, toxic work environment, nothing like what he had been told. And after months of being in a slump full of depression and hating every minute of the course, he had left and started up his own parkour coaching organization and around the same time as this, had been voted in as the chairperson for Roots of Movement. And on the run-up to the first event led by him, he'd been given a difficult decision to make. And of course, the one he'd made with the community's best interest in mind was the wrong one to so many people. So what effect did this split in the community have? Well, first of all, ROM 5, 6, 7 and 8 were affected drastically. At ROM 5 in 2014, there was a large majority of Edinburgh attendees. Those who had disagreed with Hedge's decision from other communities still attended, apart from the Coatbridge community, who all boycotted the event. The numbers at ROM 6 and 7 were higher than those at ROM 5, but were not as high as the installments 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then the cancellation of ROM 8 completed its downfall. The community spirit, which had been so strong, was now broken. There was residual tension between the sides, which affected training, jams, and even classes. All of this, as well as other little factors, eventually led to a lot of people quitting parkour or splitting off into smaller communities. Hedge resigned after 2014 and understandably wanted nothing to do with Roots of Movement in any way, shape or form in the future. Gordon Sang, a very much loved individual from Edinburgh, however was not as experienced with running events, was voted in as the new head chairperson in 2015. The new ROM committee released a statement apologising to anyone who had been negatively affected by the actions of the previous committee and said that they would take Roots of Movement in a new direction. But by now, it was too late. So there you have it. The great fallout of 2014. A massive divide in the Scottish parkour community, obliterating the spirit that linked everyone together and affecting every decision made for many years after. Thank you very much for watching this documentary. Please note, as I said at the start, this is entirely historical. So please, regardless if you were involved or not during this time, do not go spreading hate or rumors to or about anyone mentioned in this video. My next documentary will be the final one of the year, my biggest documentary yet, where you will find out the complete history of Roots of Movement. See you around. <laughs>